Hello and welcome back to the shade, shady, oh, is that better? I'm blind now, not really, <laughs> Gorilla Biker. And today what we're doing is we're changing the front and rear brake pads on my 2019 Kawasaki Z900RS. Um, because I did check them before the track day, they were getting low and they're also the original brake pads. So they're, you know what, nearly five years old now. Um, time for a change either way. Brake pads can collect contamination from, from the road and whatnot as you use them, so it's better to change them. And on the front, we're putting EBC, double H. These are FA379HH. You can pause it there if you need them. There you go. And then on the rear, uh, we're putting on FA140HH once again. You can pause it there if you need them. So that's what we're doing. Um, what, what else I'll be using is some silicone based anti-seize. Um, someone did point out in a video previously that doing brakes on a uh, bike equipped with ABS, you really should use a silicone based anti-seize instead of copper based, which is fair enough. I just didn't have any at the time, uh, but it was a very valid point. So I did buy some afterwards. And uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. I've already done the left-hand side. Uh, we'll go through a few bits about the left hand side watch outs at the very end so stick around for that uh, but first we're just going to do this right hand side front which is very easy um, so we're going to take off the caliper pop out those brake pads show you how to do all that um, and then put in the new pads and clean clean the caliper while it's off and bleed the brakes so yeah stay tuned if you want to see that so first what we're going to do is take out this little or loosen this little bolt here and this little bolt down here, these are the pad retaining bolts. We're gonna take those out here and here. Um, and that's a size five Allen. I highly recommend getting yourself a set of long reach ones. These are from uh, Harbor Freight. They did not cost much. And then, whoops, up here, this is a size 12 hex bolt and this is a size 12 hex bolt. So we'll take off these two then. The reason you loosen these ones first is if you don't, it's pretty much impossible off the bike. Um, so, I might need both of my hands for this, we'll see. Nope, I did not. You don't need to back these all the way out right now. You can, it doesn't really make a difference. Um, but you don't need to, you can wait till they come off the bike. And then what you're gonna do with the other two is just, you can turn the wheel a bit to give yourself more access. And then you're gonna pop that one off and that one off. Uh, and you do have plenty of space to do that, so I might have to set you down here, we'll see. Someone pointed out the bigger camera doesn't give you as good a view, which is fair enough, so I'm trying to use the GoPro a bit more. There we go. Is that one loosened? <sighs> Difficult to do with one hand, but <laughs> I've had practice over the years at this point. So anyway, what I'm gonna do is zip these two out and then I'll come back to you. So then we're gonna, well actually, do you know what? I'm gonna take these two out while it's on the bike. It's a bit easier. I was like, anyone who's been watching the channel a while, having these not completely rusted and these not completely rusted, <laughs> it's really nice. I think this is, it is the newest bike I've ever owned. Uh, so then we're gonna gently take this out, careful not to like bash into your wheels. And because we took these two guys out, um, these just fell out. So these are like a little bit blued. They're not bad. Um, I did use them on the track. They did get hot, but they didn't get bad because um, my springs aren't right. So I couldn't actually brake as hard as I wanted to. Now in here, you'll see this is not actually the dirtiest ever. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use, before you push these back in, and I'm gonna reuse those guys to push it back in in a second. But you wanna clean around your piston here and here and just give it a quick spray out and a clean uh, as much as you can. As you can see, these are like incredibly clean anyway. And uh, the people who had this bike before me obviously never rode it. Rode it with anger. I mean, these are genuinely super clean. Um, but still, I'm gonna give them a clean. The best thing to use here is an old toothbrush or something. Um, and yeah, also, I know before people go crazy, you shouldn't leave this hang for very long. What I usually do is if I'm not gonna grab it after two seconds, I'll just pop it back on there like that. So it's it's actually resting on these little these little tabs. Um, there's actually not much space here though. So you're not putting too much pressure on this down here. Plus I'm planning on changing these to braided at some point in this near future anyway. So not a big concern. 
So now what I'm gonna do is put, get my brake cleaner, um, give that a quick clean off, and then we'll be ready to put in um, the new pads, which I'll show you as well. And how I'm gonna push the pistons back in, just in case you've never seen this before, is I'm gonna pop the two pads back in, one second. I'm gonna pop the two pads back in like that, jam something in between them, and then just, uh, it's actually really hard to do this with two hands, but then I'm gonna lever on this bar to push them back in. And the reason I use the old pads is because I don't wanna damage the face of the pistons, but also, if you push in one piston, it pushes another one back out, so you need something to kind of retain them all. Uh, so that's how that's how I do it. I'll try to show you on, on the bigger the bigger camera in a second uh, when I'm actually doing it. But first, I'm just gonna give it a clean. So now your pistons are pushed back in. You don't need to go the whole way with them, just enough so you can get the new pads in. And then the new pads, I'm actually gonna give these pins a quick clean first as well. Now what I'm gonna do with this stuff is I'm just gonna roll some of it onto the threads, just like that. And then what I do is I get the two of them and I just roll the threads together like so. so. It's just a little bit on both, so it's a nice smooth application. Then, I'm gonna pop the new pads in one by one. And drop this guy down in there. So when you're finished, your pads should look like this. I have not tightened these up fully yet. We'll do that when it's back on the bike. Um, but they should, should just look like this. Because you've moved your pistons back, it should fall on there really easy. And now we're gonna put a bit of anti-seize onto the threads of this. Same as before, you don't need a huge amount. And then I'll just spread it out. And you just want to get it down near the, near the front of the threads, because then it'll move itself back up the threads, essentially. And then just slot them back in, making sure everything's nicely seated. Do it with your fingers at the start so you make sure that you're getting onto the threads. And that's it. So, one thing you're gonna notice here is when you give this a squeeze, it's gonna go all the way to the handlebars. So you wanna squeeze that a few times until your pistons pop back out. You can actually hear them when you're doing it in person. And then there you go. Now, the correct way to tighten these bolts, it doesn't matter as much on this because it's, it's mounted this way. If you have an older bike where your bolts mount to the side, it's a lot more important. Um, but if I had a front stand that worked, which I currently don't, because on the other side, the Kawasaki's kind of rounded, um, I would spin the wheel while grabbing that a couple of times, and that kind of centers this up on the disc. Um, but unfortunately, I do not have a front stand that actually works for the Kawasaki right now. I need to, I need to rectify that. Um, but now I'm going to nip these up. There is a torque for these. I don't know it. I have never torqued front calipers. Uh, you should. I always advise people to do things the right way. You should also wear gloves. I don't do that. Um, I'm just showing you the method of how to change these right now, not the uh, ins and outs of everything. And now what we're gonna do is bleed this really quick. So this is a 10 mil spanner is what you need and something to bleed your fluid into. You wanna be careful with brake fluid because it's really corrosive and kind of sucks a lot. So you wanna squeeze your brake handle a few times. I've done videos on bleeding brakes and just open that up and squeeze and close it back up. Rinse and repeat a few times. So when you squeeze and hold your handle in and it goes into the bar, make sure you do not let go of your brake handle until you've tightened back up your nut. When you pop this off, just make sure you have a, a rag there to catch any dribbles of fluid and um, so that you don't, you know, dirty up your, your lovely paint. Once you have that all done, uh, obviously don't forget to check your, your brake fluid. I'll top this up later. And just make sure that your, your handle feel is there because um, you could have accidentally let some air in. And that's it, that's the front brake pads done. It's that easy, uh, both sides. Just to show you on this side really quick, uh, one thing you want to be careful about is your wheel speed sensor, which is this little guy here. 
and it runs up alongside the brake line. So just be careful not to brake that. That's the only thing you need to watch out for on this side. Other than that, they're both the exact same. Okay, so for the rear caliper, down here, I don't actually know. I'm gonna try to be lazy about this. I don't want to take off the back wheel. So this is on a hanger here. Obviously you can do under this bolt and this bolt, but those are the actual sliding pins for the caliper. Um, so I'm gonna see, can I just take out this retention bolt for the pads? And to show you why I think I can do that, is we only have one pin, one pin, and then they kind of just hook in. So I'm kind of hoping um, that I can just take that pin out and change these real quick. It is the lazy way, but you know, it might work. So I'm using a number one flathead piece. I already did break this loose. And then what we're doing is just twisting this out. Uh, and then behind that, we have an actual Allen key piece. So that's just a little cover uh, that blocks off the Allen key. And I'm gonna guess it's a five, the same as the front, which it is. And by the way, I'm going in blind on this. I don't know, is this how you're supposed to do this? It's probably not, knowing me, but we'll figure it out. The exhaust is very much in the way, which is a little bit annoying. There's a lot to be said for having tools. <laughs> Now, technically speaking, the correct way to do this would be to slide out the wheel axle and take the caliper off, but uh, it's a rear caliper. I'm not overly concerned about it. I can still get in there, clean it, and inspect it. So I'm just kind of hoping that this is a faster way to do it. Well, number one pad. These are very bad. Um, these probably needed to be changed a while ago. Just because there's material left on them doesn't mean there's enough material left on them. Something I think people take for granted sometimes. It is a 12. I just don't think in this day and age that people would design something that requires you to actually take your back wheel off to change, to change your pads. I think that'd be pretty rude. But I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. Look at that. So, <laughs> the correct method, I would still take this pin, just to show you, this pin. I would still take this pin here out first, so that involves the cap, and then the pin. Because once you remove this, this is gonna be a lot harder to actually remove. Uh, once you remove that, it lets you push this up, which gives you access to push your actual piston back, um, and also obviously fit in your new pads. And I'll show you the difference in meat on the pads in a second. One thing to notice is this does have Loctite on there uh, from a past life. So we will clean this off and put new Loctite on it as well. But first, what I'm gonna do is push this piston back in, which should be able to do with my fingers. <sighs> Unless it's actually seized. Generally speaking, you can move motorcycle pistons by hand. Um, it's actually a good way to tell if, if you can. And this one's really clean, so I'm gonna give it a spray off, off camera, clean it off, and uh, we're gonna push that back in. I'll let you know how I pushed it back in uh, when we're finished. So I don't know how well you're gonna see that, but that little clip needs to sit in like that if you knock it out while you're pushing back in the piston, uh, which I did. And also those pins down there need to sit in like that. So our pad, and this is backwards, but it's gonna, so th obviously there would be for the other side, I just don't have it in my hand right now. That's gonna sit in onto this seat down here. And then these two ridges sit into that clip up there. Um, so we're gonna try locate it as well. It's, it's gonna be pretty much impossible to video this part, um, but we will try. By we, I mean toaster. It's actually why I waited for, for doing the rear caliper. To cover this off, I did push the piston back in with just my fingers, so it's absolutely doable. If you can't do that, it might be an indication your piston is freed up, or you need to do uh, those hand squisher exercises a bit, bit more. So again, gonna be hard to see here, but what I did was this side, I'm gonna ruin all my work here now, but it's okay. So this side, you can actually just sit in like that. So it actually just sits down and basically holds itself in place. And then for the other side, you wanna just, <laughs> this is a lot harder with toaster here. <laughs> this was a bit easier. So there you go. 
So that is that pin now started in on the threads. I'm gonna put it in a couple more threads. But essentially you can absolutely do this in not very long uh, without taking the back wheel off. And like I said, obviously being a lazy person, so I'm just gonna wind, or not, I'm gonna wind this in like so. And then nip it up. Oh shit. So I have this bolt back in now. Uh, and then we're gonna just nip this up. Now, if you see this wobbling like this, this isn't a big deal. It's because the piston isn't compressed yet. And what we're gonna do next is use toaster's foot to squeeze the brake a couple of times. Then I'm gonna also bleed this the same way as I bled the front. Um, but essentially, you just wanna nip everything up. Now, again, there are torque specifications for all of these. I'll put them on screen. I'm just doing the tightness I've used for all this stuff for years. I am not concerned about it. Um, read into that what you will. I know there's gonna be people out there who have a, a crying fit over it, but uh, I don't really care. So uh, <laughs> do, do it however you like. Um, could you do me a favor, please, and push on that rear brake pedal a few times. I'm gonna show them this stopping moving. So just keep pushing, push, 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 push. Keep pushing. Keep it held down. No, no, just up and down, up and down. So I, you probably saw that on camera now. Piston, keep going. Piston squeezed out and hold it down. And now you can see all that movement is gone because this is now locked in place. So what we're gonna do now is bleed this. I don't need to show you again. It's the same as the front. You wanna hopefully get someone's spare foot. Ooh, feet. Uh, some people probably pay lots of money for that. <laughs> you wanna do, you know, one, two, three, and then get your other person to hold it. It is much easier to bleed a rear brake with a second person and then uh, crack this loose and let out some fluid. And I'm gonna let out one or two bits of fluid. And then again, always remember to check your reservoir, which is here for the rear, and just make sure that you have enough fluid in it. So we're gonna do that, and then I'll come back to you and we can close out this video. But this actually is very straightforward if you're not trying to record it. <laughs> and you do not need to take off, um, excuse me, the rear wheel, which is, which is nice. Action. <laughs> So that's it, that's going in the video. <laughs> so that's it. Um, one thing to note is these brake pads, I just measured them. So apparently the minimum service level for these pads is one mil of brake pad material left. On the worst brake pad, which is the, the pad that's always on the side of the piston usually gets worn a little bit more. Uh, it was 1.6 mil, that's down from about four mil of material. So it actually did still have 0.7 mil of life left. Um, the problem with that is as you get towards the end of your pad life, your, your brake does become less effective because it's at the end of its span. So it's just the piston doesn't work as well. Everything doesn't work as well. And on the front pads I had, I did have like a mill left of, of usable life on, on all of the material. So did I change them early? Theoretically, yes, but I mean, they've been on there since the bike was new. And I am a big fan of EBC's double H stuff anyway. Uh, this is the more street bias one. I can't remember the code for the, the more track bias double H. Uh, either way, these work perfectly fine on track. I've used them on track for, for years on multiple bikes. Um, can anyone do this job? Absolutely. I don't know, did I make it look easy or difficult? Literally anyone can change front brake pads. You will save yourself a wealth of money and a wealth of hassle, because you don't have to bring the bike into the, to the garage or dealership. You can 100% do this yourself, especially on a Z900 RS. Um, on older axially mounted uh, calipers, just make sure that you do have a front stand and you want to spin your wheel and, and brake. I'll do, I'll, I'll do a short on that actually with the, the CB750 at some point. On the rear, you can absolutely take off your rear wheel if you want to. Uh, I will always change them like I just did on this bike because it's very, very quick and easy. Do make sure that you bleed each caliper a little bit. Make sure you clean your pistons before you push them back in. Um, I'll link a video there of me doing an actual caliper rebuild. Uh, and that shows you your dust seal and your actual oil seal or your brake fluid seal. Um, and you don't want dirt getting in as far as your brake fluid seal. The dust, the dust seal is actually a wiper seal to, to try to keep that dirt out. But if you've caked on dirt onto the piston, it is going to get past um, that dust seal 
and if it gets really bad you'll get corrosion and then as you let your piston travel to the end of its life and push it back in it will eventually damage that seal and you'll have a leaky brake which will eventually become non-functional which is bad um but yeah Ease, ease of doing this job, extremely easy. You can absolutely do it. Uh, you just will definitely need a second fill person to fill in the rear. Uh, I could not have videoed that on my own, the front obviously being a little bit easier. And yeah, just make sure you have, you literally need a 12 mil socket, a five mil Allen key, uh, a number one flathead to remove the cap from the rear. Uh, you need some silicone based anti-seize for the front bolts and you need a little bit of thread lock for that bolt on the rear. Um, that's it, that's all you actually need. And obviously new brake pads and a bit of brake cleaner to clean everything. And I would recommend an old toothbrush as well. And uh, what do they call them over here? What are earbuds over here? Q-tips? Earbud or Q-tip, a cotton, a cotton swab uh, also helps clean as well. Just get in and around the base of the piston seals. Um, I guarantee you someone's gonna ask, but you never cleaned your older bikes this much. That's because a lot of those bikes had pistons that were already filthy. Um, the Jixxer got new pistons for that reason. Um, if there's pistons that have corrosion on them, there's really not much you can do for them, other than clean them up as best you can and reuse them as best you can. Uh, sometimes they're they're unsavable, like Kazawaki's old bike, I had to put new pistons in for him. So that's it. Um, so number one, can you do this yourself? As I said, yes. Number one, should you do your brakes often and early? Uh, brakes are the most important thing on your bike, along with your suspension and tires. If you don't have those things, you're not gonna have a good time, you're gonna crash. You're gonna hurt yourself and you're gonna damage your bike. Um, I would sooner have my engine fail than my brakes or suspension or tires fail because an engine fails once it doesn't lock up too bad, you're probably gonna be fine. It's a different story if it locks up too bad, but we won't get into that. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of it. Don't forget to bleed your fluid once every two years. Also very important. And um, so I'm going to do a full replacement of this fluid. I also need to do it on the V-Strom. I have brake pads for the V-Strom as well. I will also make a video on that as requested. And yeah, until next time, I hope this was useful. Uh, if you've watched this far, thank you very much for watching. As always, a very special thank you to all of my patrons and to Toaster for uh, being my camera person here for a little bit. I'm going to try and involve her a little bit more because it's very handy having a camera person. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what we can do uh, yeah, until next time thanks again for watching I hope everyone had a good Christmas uh, I actually did mean to make more videos over Christmas but I hurt my back uh, so I was essentially an invalid for a few days we won't talk about how I hurt my back it wasn't anything cool or exciting unfortunately uh, and yeah until next time uh, thanks again for watching adios outro crew out of interest, because someone has already asked me to do the brakes on the V-Strom, which are essentially the same as the brakes on this, but I am going to do them uh, just to show everyone. Does everyone want to see the brake rebuilds and whatnot on the Valkyrie? Because I am going to rebuild those um, and, and, and do that fully. Is that something you want to see? I have already done brake rebuild videos. I don't want to put out the same videos if people don't want to see it. So let me know, is it something that, is it different enough that you want to see it? Or will I just do it myself and tell you that it's done? Um, yeah, let me know. Bye, Outro Crew. Happy New Year. Oh, and ha Happy New Year, yeah. <laughs> happy New Year to everyone, not just the Outro Crew. I forgot about that bit. <laughs>